DJs all the time. WDJ, 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 no. Every time I see you look in my way, baby, baby, can't you hear my heartbeat in the bar? Hello, hello. Beautiful day, beautiful day. Testing, yes. We are test one, two, test one, two. Oh, Bo, you're such a silly dog. Test one, two, test you're one, two. You're such a silly dog. Test, test, test. How you doing? Good morning. This is me. This is you. This is all of us together this morning. We are going to have fun. Yes, we are. Can you bring this one?
WDJO Cincinnati. The following is a paid program. Its views and opinions are not necessarily those of this station or its management. Good morning and welcome to the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour starring Gary Rosignol of Remax Preferred Group. To be part of the program, dial 513-563-1480 to get your answers to questions about your home and property. That number again, 513-563-1480. Now, here's Gary. Hey, it's a week and a day from Super Bowl Who Day Week. Weekend or Super Bowl Day, that's right. You know, Monday was Hell's Freezing Over Day. Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> and it's all the Bengals' fault. <laughs> That's what they said if they were going to make it in the Super Bowl. When That's hell right. freezes over. That's right, Gary. That's. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm Gary Rosignol, Certified Residential Specialist with REMAX Referred Group. Your host every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 o'clock right here on WDJO. My guest this morning has been here several times. It's always a pleasure to talk to this vibrant, outspoken, and sometimes hilarious person. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, right? <laughs> he is the voice of appraisal, my friend Phil Crawford with Appraisal Stream. Yeah. How are you? How are you, Gary? Great. Good to be here today. Good to be- my, my voice is a little bit low today. You know, kind of got that, that radio voice because I was screaming at the television last uh, last Sunday. <laughs> oh, my love. gosh. What, what a day. What yeah, a day. Yeah. So, All exciting right. things in Cincinnati, my friend. Exciting you, things. You got it. But before we get started, and we're going to get started here in just a moment i want to give you my listening audience a chance to win ten dollar gift card to starbucks and you can just call 513-563-1480 if you haven't won in the past 60 days then you qualify and can win today if you answer this question i was an american guitarist singer songwriter actor and television host busy man Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i sold over 45 million records in the 60s and 70s songs like Gentle on my mind, Galveston, Wichita lineman. Who am I? We'll find out, right? <laughs> 513-563-1480. <laughs> if you know who that artist is, man, 45 million records. He's, 45 million. That That's huge. That's money. That's money. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, he was out because he went on. Yeah, there you go. He didn't need the money. Need it. Well, there you go. But it's the, it's the joy of it, you know? I saw his concert about three years ago, three, four years ago. He had his daughter on one side. His son was playing drums. Right. He had another uh, son on, on guitar next to him, and they right. watched after him. They, uh-huh. they took care of Dad. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Good. Cool concert. So, all right. Well, Phil, real estate listings aren't the only shortage in today's market, right? <laughs> There's an extreme lack of appraisers in many areas. <laughs> you told me yesterday when we talked, how many appraisers nationally? Uh, about 78,000. 78,000. In the country. Oh, that, but that's in the country, and uh, the appraisers that are in the field actually doing the work is about 20,000, I would Whew. say, 20,000 appraisers. It's hard to become one. We've got 1.5 million licensed realtors in the yeah. National Association of Realtors. Your numbers are up big time. I mean, you had a lot of people that joined in you know, the National Association of Realtors, became realtors during the pandemic, so they wanted to have that big uh, change in their life. Last I heard, we had like Five thousand seven hundred in Greater Cincinnati, and oh yeah, yesterday the number is up to close to seven thousand. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of realtors out there, <laughs> and you know what the thing is is all, all those real estate agents need to understand what we do as real estate appraisers because our business is crazy. Well, our business we, is crazy. Uh, for those who are listening, you haven't bought or sold a house in the past. Oh, who knows? Yeah. But explain real quick. What, what is the appraisal process? Well, the appraisal process traditionally has always been that we will get an order from a bank or appraisal management company. We go out to the property and we inspect, observe the property, and then we write a report, right? But things are changing, Gary. Things are changing because, as most of you know, uh, we had the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We had this huge, massive, you know, refinance boom between 2020 and 2021. What was your main purpose? Well, my main purpose was to make sure that the, the property was sufficient collateral for the bank. That's going to make the loan, okay? That was the main purpose behind it. And to go out and to make sure that all the data uh, that has to do with the property is accurate, okay? That was the main purpose. And, of course, to produce a credible result uh, as far now, as the Now, did it matter the if the dishwasher worked or not? No, it does matter. Oh, yeah, all those things matter, you know? But in the traditional sense of the appraisal process, the appraiser or the appraiser's trainee would always go out to the property and, and do the observation, do the mm-hmm. inspection. Not mm-hmm. a home inspection, but an appraisal inspection. Okay, we need to clarify that because right. a lot of people think – 
an appraisal is an inspection or an inspection is an appraisal. Right, right. No, it's it, the appraisal inspection is different from a traditional home inspection. Okay, so it's it's a it's a different animal altogether. Okay. All right. So what ended up happening was is during the pandemic, we had those lockdowns. Remember, we couldn't go inside of people's homes. So the big question was is how were real estate appraisers going to appraise property for the banks for mortgages mortgages if we couldn't go in? And they they basically Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac said, hey, listen. You guys can appraise the property without seeing the inside of it. Just for a little bit until we get through this whole <laughs> pandemic situation, okay? All right? It's like me showing a house without actually showing the house. That's right. That's right. So they kind of made a little bit of an exception there and said, you guys don't have to go in. Well, here's the situation. We didn't go in on a couple of the deals, right? All of a sudden, FHFA. Now, remember, Fannie and Freddie are government-controlled entities. They are controlled by the government. Okay, they say they're private in you know companies, but they're not. Fannie and Freddie decided that they were allowed to do these, you know, these desktop appraisals. Uh -huh. And uh, what ended up happening was, Gary, bottom line is um, they now have made it a rule or they've made it so desktop appraisals can be done. On they got a little of taste of it. They got they a little went, taste of what a desktop <laughs> appraisal was. They went, oh, and, and they this went, is kind of cool. And they said, oh, my gosh, we, we can get the appraisal back in two days quicker than what, what it ever has been before. And that's the problem. So, so now. But what they, are you sacrificing for those two days? Well, Let's just let's talk about the real world here. Okay, right, so yeah. okay, so FHFA is a government agency. That's okay? the Federal Housing Finance Agency. They're in control of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're in control of the GSEs. All right. And so they, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, the money to the banks. To the yes, they 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 buy the money and securitize them in a secondary market. Right. Okay. So when you're looking at what FHFA said, that you know from going forward, if you're if you're purchasing a home and if you're selling a home. You can have a desktop appraisal done. Okay, now this is one that I don't walk into, okay? We can, can sit this, here and do it, right? You can, I can sit here and do it right now. And then what's going to happen is is there's going to be a third-party inspector. Third party inspector, go out to the property, collect the data, and then give it to the appraiser. Now, the appraiser may be in Cincinnati. They mm -hmm. may be in Chicago, Illinois. Ooh. They may be in Sioux City. I mean, I don't know where this appraiser is going to be at. India? They, no, no, I don't think overseas. I don't okay. think because uh. yeah, No, I don't think overseas. But I think they're going to be in different parts of the country, or they could be locally. Okay. And you and I have been in this business for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this for 33 years. I've been doing this for 25 years. When Fannie and Freddie made this ruling under the, the COVID restrictions and lockdowns, most of the local lenders in town here said, no, we're not going to do it. And the reason why is because if the appraised value does not meet the purchase contract price. Which is happening. Which does happen. On average, 10% of the time, but you get a hot market, it can happen even more. Mm -hmm. thing that the seller is going to say to you if the appraised value doesn't hit and a desktop appraisal is done. You you priced it wrong. You priced it wrong or you the, appraiser yeah, the appraiser never screwed, yeah. entered into the house. That's right. going to be the biggest complaint going forward. We saw it time and time again in 2020 and 2021. It was an absolute mess, and now it's becoming policy on a nationwide level, and we're going to have to watch out for it. So that's the big thing that's going on in the appraisal industry today. It's called the desktop appraisal. They call it the, the modern appraisal, the digital appraisal. You're going to hear all these different things. The bottom line is, is a data collector, not an appraiser, is going to walk into your house, the house that you're selling. They're going to come in there with a fancy-dancy 3D camera. They're going to 3D everything in that house, send it to an appraiser far, far away, and then a value is going to be derived. And I tell you right now, the sellers are not going to be happy with Something it. Something we have to be – I have to let sellers know when we sit down first talking about listing their house. Yes. I have to bring them aware that the code of ethics that I'm obligated mm -hmm. to follow, yes. which yes. I do. I yes. study it. You do. Standard, <laughs> standard practice 1-3 says realtors in attempting to secure a listing shall not deliberately mislead the owner as to market, to market value. value. Right, right. So, so so if they're interviewing two or three or four realtors, which I, I say, you know, you should probably interview at least two others right. along mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're picking me and I'm the best. Right. Uh -huh. But somebody's going to come in and say, well, what did, what did Gary Rosignol say you're, he could, could sell your house for? Well, I can sell it for 10000 more. Right. Guess who's going to get the listing? The other agent. Yeah. 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 But and what, then, and yeah. then guess what? It's not going to praise out. It ain't going to praise, it praise out. And it's no. not going to sell, probably. Well, not only that, the emotions behind that transaction. Let's say if that happens. Let's okay, talk let's about the emotions. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because let's say someone comes in and says, well, I can sell it for 10000 more. So all of a sudden, this seller now has the understanding that this house is worth, say, $300,000, right? Mm -hmm. 
the appraiser comes in, doesn't appraise out at 300, but the desktop appraisal was done. So the emotion is going to be building more and more, saying that appraiser never walked inside the house. That appraiser never walked inside the house, and mm -hmm. yet they're shorting me $10,000. Yeah. So they go to the closing table, and they get a load of this, okay? They go to the closing table. You've been at closing tables before with sellers. A few times. Yeah, a few times. <laughs> and, and sometimes they have to, you know, they have to renegotiate the contract, right? So they go to the closing table, and they're getting maybe $10,000 less than what they thought they were going to get. Uh -huh. When they sign those papers at that closing table, what's going through their mind now is the appraiser never walked inside the house. The appraiser never walked inside the house. Then they're going to go home, and they're going to be inside their new home, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the one of them are going to be upset. They say, I'm going to go down to you know the grocery store. I'm going to get a beer because I'm upset because the appraiser never went inside the house, okay? <laughs> and they're going to check out the grocery store, and they're going to pay more. Ever have paid for, okay? And then they're going to be upset about it. So then they're going to need to get some gasoline or go to, go to the gas pump. They're going to pay more money than they've ever paid before at the gas pump. And it's then, all the appraiser's fault. Because the appraiser the didn't go inside the house, okay? <laughs> and then the spouse is going to call and say something's wrong with the new house, go to the hardware store. They're going to pay more for whatever they're buying at the hardware store because the appraiser didn't go inside the house. And what's going to end up happening is, is that $10,000, that $20,000 that they think that they left on the closing mm -hmm. table is going to eat at them and eat at them. And what it is doing is, is in 2019, that was something that they would swallow like a dead piece of meat. In 2020, with inflation, that's the additional cost of living for that year. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be very upset. They're going to be very emotional. And it's going to build on them and build on them. And eventually, they're going to turn, turn the appraisers into the state. Or they're going to go after the bank. Or they're going to be – there's going to be additional emotional situations that take place. And also, afterwards. the realtor could also turn – oh. the realtor could say, well, we could have got – Three hundred, yes. but the appraiser didn't go inside the house. The appraiser so, didn't go inside the house, so it only appraised for two ninety. Yeah, so sorry. I mean, it's not my, it's not on me, but yeah, the, the appraiser didn't go inside. Fault, right, yeah, the we can fault. blame you. Yeah, you can blame you. Exactly, <laughs> it's your fault. Oh no, we get blamed on everything. <laughs> we get blamed on everything, and we have to be ready for it. But it, it is just amazing. You and I have done this for so long, for so long. You know, I have trained so many appraisers. I've trained like seven, okay, and four are still in business today. The purchase transaction. What happened to the other three? They went into different jobs. They, they, they're fine. They're okay. They went. They became a realtor. Yeah, well, yeah exactly. Actually, two of them are. Two of them are realtors. And they're very successful. They did a good job. But honestly, when it comes down to it, um, the emotion that's behind it, when it comes to the purchase transactions, those type of appraisals, when I trained somebody, that was the last, the last transaction I would ever send, you know, a, a, a trainee to. So these are very, very important situations, very yeah. emotional. And we can't just you know, bypass the appraisal process, the traditional appraisal process when it comes to purchase transactions. Gotcha. Yep. The Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour is brought to you today by the Rock and Roll Real Estate Team at REMAX Preferred Group. And my number is 513-777-2402 or rockincincy, that's R-O-C-K-I-N-C-I-N-C-Y dot com. I would like to express my gratitude to all our troops, veterans, first responders, and our heroes in service and health care. That would be our nurses and our doctors, our nurses' aides, our health care staff, the EMT staff, our police and firefighters. They often, so many times, deal with life and death situations, and especially during this pandemic. You know what? Thank them. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers. See somebody in uniform to say, thank you. They that's love right. it. That's they right. Love, that's all they want. That's right. They don't make enough money to do this. No. Do what they do. Put no. their life on the line. Yeah. You just got to thank them. So, um, it, yeah, it, it the whole the whole thing is emotional. And, yeah. <clears throat> you know, you have a buyer who saved up their 20% down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've got $40,000 in the bank. Right. You know, and, right. and they're going to buy a $280,000 house. Mm -hmm. And... And so a house comes on the market, it's listed for 280 and I have to tell them, yeah. and I do my research ahead of time and say, sure. yeah, it, it's worth 280 it's worth 290 mm -hmm. It'll probably sell for 300 because right. a buyer is going to want to put in more cash to beat your deal out. Mm -hmm. And now I have to watch, are they doing are they going to pay the difference if it doesn't appraise? Right, right. Well, so you manage that expectation, don't you? I try to. You try to manage that expectation. Yeah. But and but the, the third-party unbiased individual in this transaction does provide clarity to you in that transaction. For example, I've, you know, I've got a listing. We listed it for two fifty-five. Yeah. That that's spot on. Mm -hmm. They ended up accepting an offer for two seventy. We had another one that was more. Right. Right. But, but she, you know, we. She's expecting it not to appraise. Okay. She knows she's not going to get two seventy. 
Okay, so you, you've managed that expectation with, yeah. with that seller, yeah. right? Right. Okay, so let's say, for instance, under traditional appraisal, it appraises at 255 or something, so she's short a little bit. What if the appraiser never comes inside the house? You see, <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the optics behind it. You see, it, it, you can accept the results of an appraisal and appraised value if the actual professional goes into the home and does the job. And, we, it, and she monitors who goes in and out of the house. She monitors goes yeah. in the house, right. You, now, yeah. another thing that I do is I watch because I've had appraisers come down from Columbus and Dayton uh-huh. to appraise one of yes. my listings in Sharonville or Evendale, and I call them. Now, a lender can't call them. No, but you can. But I can call them and yeah. say, um, I see your, your, your phone exchange is 937. You from Dayton? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you know about the um, – the, the city of Sharonville. Oh, I've got all the data here. No. Have you ever right. been in the city of Sharonville? Do right. you know? What's going on? What's going on in the city of Sharonville? Right, right. Do you know about this street versus that street? Well, well what are you going to do when you have a desktop appraiser and that appraiser is somewhere else, maybe up in Cleveland? Now you got a data collector with a really cool 3D camera, right? Uh-huh. Well, you have a camera know walking what I'm through there. Do. What are you going to do? I have what are you no going to do? It, but, but you have a duty and responsibility to the seller and yeah. to that property. Yeah. So you need to start asking. Now, Gary, in 2022, not only are, are you coming into the house, but who is coming in the house? Mm-hmm. Who is this? Is this yeah. a data collector that's not even affiliated with the appraisal company? Who is this person? Is it the is it the trainee that's that's working under the appraiser or the appraiser themselves? Right. And I can also see probably in 2022, you and other realtors having to put some stipulation in your contract that says when the appraisal is done, it has to be done by the appraiser. The wow. inspection has okay. to be done by the appraiser, not some third party group. That's going to come in with the fancy dancy camera, that, and that's a problem too. That, that could cost us two to five days. Oh, two to five <laughs> weeks. Two to five weeks. Because what ends up happening is, is what if they're not happy with that appraisal? They do a reconsideration of value. The seller says, "Look, I want the appraiser to come in here. Uh-huh. I want the appraiser to come in." Next thing you know, the appraiser's in Cleveland. They're not driving down here to do that. <laughs> they're not driving down. So now you have to wait even longer. I so. did. I did your job for for a summer, and mm-hmm. when when things got a little hunky dory yeah, sure, and sure. I teamed up with a local appraiser and and he trained me to fill out those documents sure. and go out and measure the house and right. I got the wheelie thing and and do all the drawings and I went this is boring. Yeah. Well, I we, we I find it like big exciting. Your- That's because you don't use a disto <laughs> laser. I'd use one of those. That's much more exciting that way. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, we go inside the house. That's the most important thing. Yeah, you right. know, so We need to go away for our first break. Afterwards, we're going to have a moment with Miles, and Phil and I are going to tell you how not to win in a multiple offer situation. Okay. You're listening to the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour on WDJO, 1480 AM, now on FM 99.5 and 107.9. Do you want to sell your home but just don't know where to start? Are you thinking about downsizing, but the process is just too much? Gary Rossignol, real estate pro at REMAX Preferred Group and host of the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour, has the answers. Let Gary put his vast real estate knowledge to work for you. Interest rates are at record lows. The market is red hot. Now is a great time to make your move. Call Gary, 513-777-2402. 513-777-2402. Licensed in Ohio and Kentucky, 513-777-2402. Get ready, because here they come. One, two, three, five. It's Beatlemania all over again with the Fab Four, the ultimate tribute to the Beatles. Entertainment Tonight says seeing the Fab Four is just like seeing the Beatles. The Fab Four takes you through the 60s with the music that changed our lives. It's a show you won't want to miss. Live at the Taft Theater, Friday, March 4th. For more info, visit tafttheater.org. Independent senior living is something everyone understands. It means living life the way you want to, doing what you want. At Chesterwood Village in Westchester, you can do it your way without all the hassles of home ownership. No more cleaning gutters, mowing lawns, shoveling snow, or paying expensive gym memberships. Live on a quiet lane of patio homes, in a luxurious senior apartment, or in an assisted living suite with compassionate health care professionals just seconds away. Village, you have the convenience of more specialized care for state-of-the-art rehab and therapy, as well as long-term respite or memory care. Chesterwood Village offers a home-like environment like no other with daily activities to keep the mind and body moving. Learn more at hillandale.com or call Jane at Chesterwood today at 513-777-1400. That's 513-777-1400 for Chesterwood Village. 
Dr. Peck is probably, without a doubt, the best in Cincinnati. If you're comfortable with your smile, then you don't have a problem smiling at the situation or whatever it might be. I've never had a problem that Dr. Peck didn't solve. He does such a good job, they're very natural looking. Dr. Peck puts the patient first. For your own beautiful new smile, call Dr. Fred Peck at 513-621-7666 or visit PeckSmiles.com. I'm Judy King, and I love my new smile. Need oil? No problem. Visit Relodyne.com. Whether it's for your car, truck, or plant, Relodyne has you covered. Relodyne is the region's largest supplier and one-stop shop for all of your lubricant needs and industrial reliability services. Relodyne stocks over 10,000 products. Relodyne is also home for Duramax. Duramax is the fastest-growing engine oil in the United States. To learn more, visit Relodyne.com. Again, that's Relodyne.com. R-E-L-A-D-Y-N-E.com. Hey, thanks for listening and watching. We're on Facebook, and now we're on Twitter and LinkedIn all at the same time. My name is Gary Rosignall, Certified Residential Specialist, better known as Cincinnati's Rock and Roll Realtor, with Remax Preferred Group. Better known as Cincinnati's Rock and Roll Realtor. And now <laughs> this is... So I'm sailing for the moment we have been waiting for. This is Mr. Miles Beers for the captain of our ship at Remax Deferred Group. He comes on every Saturday morning. Thank you for that with his thoughts for the day. Good morning, Miles. Hey, Gary, rock and roll, my friend. One of the modern definitions is a person treated as a celebrity, especially in inspiring fanatical admiration. As in, the agent that helped us buy our home was a rock star. Or, my broker is a rock star. 47 years ago, when Remax was started, agents couldn't join Remax unless they were already what today would be called a rock star. Today, although the majority of our agents are top producing agents, we have the best training and agent development systems in the industry. Chris Beresford and I were the REMAX Broker Owners of the Year for the entire United States back in 2013 mm. and are continuously mentoring and assisting agents on a daily basis. Karen, the Vice President of REMAX Preferred Group, Leanne, Tabitha, Ree, and Beth are training, coaching, mentoring agents full-time. Our administration staff assists the agents like no other brokerage that I'm aware of. The majority of our agents are already rock stars, and the rest are well on the way. So if the listeners out there are real estate agents that want to be a rock star or want to work with rock stars, give Chris Beresford a call and ask her about the value of becoming a REMAX agent. Being a rock star realtor is a lot of hard work. Okay, All right, there we go. All right. <clears throat> that is uh, Miles Beersford. He is the broker owner, along with his lovely wife, Christine, of Remax Preferred Group, the captain of our ship, because they are also sailors. Oh, are they and, really? Yeah. Yeah, they, there you go. Yeah, a nice sailboat down in Florida. So. Yeah. And now next week, I'm going to have another rock star agent from our brokerage, Kay Edwards. She's the 2022 president of the Cincinnati Area Board of Realtors. Area Board of Realtors. Good, yeah. good. We need, may have to have a little conversation with her about these desktop appraisals. Yeah. How about that? Uh, you got it. You, <laughs> bet, you bet for sure. Later on the show, we're going to have a visit with Bill Kerrigan of the Dragonfly Foundation. I'm grateful for all my regular listeners. Just to name a few, i got to shout out and say hi to Carol, who's listening from South Lebanon. Uh, Skip Strohmeyer, I know he's listening. Felicia, Leah Crane, Steve Zinzer, Steve Templin, Mike and Nancy Little, who are in Florida. Jane Real, she's listening and watching on Facebook. My family and all the many realtor friends that tune in each week. You'll want to tune in next week as well with um, we're gonna have Kay Edwards and Reed Young. He'll be my co my co host next week. So sounds good. Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour is brought to you today by the Rock and Roll Real Estate Team at Remax Preferred Group, five one three seven 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 two four zero two. Our houses are rocking because the buyers are knocking. Oh, they are, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Big so, time. So, speaking of which, mm -hmm. Phil, yeah, 
Yeah. Buyers are doing everything they can to purchase a home. They're waiving inspections. They're yes. waiving appraisals. How can they waive appraisal? They can waive an appraisal. They don't have to have the you know rely on the appraisal to have the it done. The mortgage lender needs to have an appraisal, though, right? Well, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. So if you have a good qualified buyer, buy for what's called an appraisal waiver through okay. the GSEs, Fannie and Freddie, and they don't have to have the appraisal done. But remember, when the appraisal is not done through a waiver, that impacts the buyer. That's the buyer's decision, right? When the appraisal waiver or when the desktop appraisal is done through Fannie Mae, that impacts the seller. And that's our biggest concern as appraisers right now is that sellers are not going to be happy with the fact that this value is done and the appraiser has never walked inside the house. Now, let me let me talk to you a little bit about something about this this so-called um, fancy dancy 3D camera they're going to bring in. OK, <laughs> they're going to bring this thing in and it's going to be a data collector. So most likely it's not going to be an appraiser. All right. And they're going to scroll around each room. And they're going to take a photograph and take a, a video image of the house. Now, I do that myself. I take video images of the house, and I take photographs of the home, things like that. Under law, Gary, I'm required that everything I do inside that house, the photographs, the videos, the notes, everything belongs to you. <clears throat> belongs to me. And it's confidential. Right. It's a confidential rule that I have to follow. I can't borrow it. You can't, bo you can't borrow it. I can't sell it. I can't do anything. The only way I can even share it is if a judge says you got to share it. Okay? okay. So... That's in my work file for five years, and after five years is over with, that work file is destroyed. It's gone, never to be seen again, mm -hmm. right? Some of these new companies that are out there with this new desktop appraisal, with this fancy-dancy 3D camera, what they're going to do, Gary, is you got to make sure that your sellers and your buyers understand this. That data may be able to be sold to other third-party services. Like Not, what? Like, you know, companies that go out there and market, let's say, for instance, they ask the same question I ask. How old is your HVAC system? Well, it's 10 years old. 10 years old? Oh, man. We're looking at two more years. This thing may give out, right? That data could be sold off that way. You know, your carpet. Everything that has to do with your house could be sold off to individuals that may want to try to sell you something in the future. Also, you know, this is your home. This is personal information. So if you come into your bedroom and you do a 3D camera on your closet, do you really want that data and information out there to be mm. sold into somebody else? The yeah, answer is right. no. Okay. Yeah. Remember, everything that you, big big data is big data, and it is very very popular, and it is expensive. Okay. And people will pay really good mm. money to do it. You go down to the grocery store right now. You put in your whatever card you got. You got all the data on your on your buying habits. You know what you buy, when you buy it, all those things. Do you really want to have that data? That's collected inside of your home, sold to somebody else. I get no. I, that, that sounds a little little hooky. It's a little to me. freaky, yeah. isn't yeah, it? it, it is, you know, yeah. and the, it, sellers will be like, "Well, I'm selling this house, so what do I care?" Well, there's still record of you owning that home and what was inside of it, you know. And the other thing is, is that's the new buyer coming in. Now, the new buyer comes in this home, and somebody out there's got a 3D copy of this place. Number one, number two, who they sell that to? Yeah, who's the data sold to? Remember, a lot of these companies that are third party that that have the fancy dancy camera they own that data and you sign off that they own it this is these are all of the things that real estate agents you're there to protect you have a fiduciary agreement you're there to protect the tech the seller from different things not just from the market forces these are things that you're going to have to consider as agents as well we all we, we started at what we what you're trying to accomplish is determine what is market, market value. value right that, that's the whole purpose right and it makes it the easiest when i'm able to do it and you don't have and, to bring in everybody else and when a seller says oh the market's so hot we're gonna our house is worth thirty thousand more than what right. market value is because we got heavy duty nails and we got uh, a lifetime roof and, which we just and, put on and they, they firmly believe it and that's it's emotional and they firmly believe it yeah and the one thing that they're going to freak out about is when below price then all of a sudden they're gonna be like the appraiser didn't go inside and as a realtor i we are obligated to in to help the seller come to terms with what is market value yeah, market value you know and there's a, sp a very specific definition of market value. and you as an appraiser your job isn't to solidify the purchase contract no. it's to determine what is market value determine market and see, the, the, here's the issue that I'm running into also, Gary. And this is something we need to worry about with these desktops. And this, this is actually a big problem on a nationwide level. You know, what if these companies decide one day that, you know what, we're having too many of these contracts not come in at value. So we're going to have the desktop people push the value just to rubber stamp the contract. Mm -hmm. That that mm -hmm. that will create an yeah, issue like yeah. 2008 oh, in two oh, seconds. Okay. So. Lots of things, Gary. Yeah. Tune in Sunday nights at 8 p.m. for John Englehart and the Sunday Soda Shop right here on WDJO. Don't go away.
Coming up next is my music history. I love that part. And then Phil and I will explain why, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Oh, please. <laughs> you're, li- <laughs> you're listening to WDJO 1480 AM, now FM 995 and 107.9. Don't bother knocking in the house. Are you thinking about selling your home or in the market to downsize but don't know where to start? Hi, this is Gary Rosignol, host of the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour on WDJO. If you've been asking these questions, call me today for a no-obligation consultation at 513-777-2402. Let me help you transition from where you are to where you want to be. I'm licensed in Ohio and Kentucky. That's 513-777-2402. And don't forget to catch me Saturday mornings from 9 to 10 right here on WDJO. Menopause the Musical, the Broadway parody hit that will have you cheering at your seat and dancing in the aisles. It's impossible not to laugh. The New York Times. It's hilarious. Go see it. The View. Women need this. The Today Show. Menopause the Musical, February 15th through the 27th at the Aronoff Center. Tickets on sale now at CincinnatiArts.org, 513-621-ARTS, and the Aronoff Center Ticket Office. You don't want to miss this. I'm having a hot flash. Are you faced with a big repair on your vehicle? I may have the solution. Hi, I'm Robert Nolan of John Nolan Auto Service. You won't have to worry about your ability to pay for your next repair with our 100-day no-interest financing with Snap Finance. No credit, bad credit, never a problem, and most of all, no credit check. So if you're hearing strange noises coming from your transmission, that grinding noise is getting louder and louder. Just call us at John Nolan Auto Service at 859 261 8833 and we'll guide you through the process peace of mind payments with snap finance is another reason more people have chosen to trust their vehicle repairs to john nolan auto service john nolan auto service is immediately located in newport kentucky call us 859-261-8833 today We've all had a little trouble social distancing from our refrigerators, and our waistlines have suffered. However, Skechers would like to help you get back on track with our incredible Go Walk footwear, because once you put on Skechers Go Walks, they're so comfortable, you'll be inspired to get out there and start walking. Skechers is the comfort technology company, and Go Walks are fully loaded with all the comfort and performance innovations you need. Find the number one walking footwear in the world, Skechers Go Walk, for men and women at Skechers.com, a Skechers store, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. This is Anita Berry, your Medicare plan coach. Are you turning 65 soon, retiring from work, or just received Medicare due to a disability? The options can be quite confusing. I am a local independent broker representing many companies. I will help you navigate the Medicare process from start to finish, educating you on the various options available. I do not charge a fee. Please call me at 513-739-6028 or visit my website, anita at yourmedicareplancoach.com. Oh, yes. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. It's time for music history. And on this day back in 1962, the first day of recording sessions for Ray Charles, Modern Sounds and Country Western Music took place at Capitol Studios in New York City. Regarded by many critics as Charles' best studio album, the album's lead single, I Can't Stop Loving You, became a huge hit on country music radio stations, and the record has now shipped over 500,000 copies in the United States alone, and that was 60 years ago. (laughs) Today in 1967, the Beatles filmed part of the promo clip for Penny Lane around the Royal Theatre in Stratford, London, and walking up and down Angel Lane in London. Together with the video for Strawberry Fields Forever, this was one of the what later became known as music video. Today in 1972, Paul Simon released his first new song without his partner Art Garfunkel called Mother and Child Reunion, which peaked at number four in the U.S. Simon got the idea for the song's title from a chicken and egg dish called Mother and Child Reunion that he saw on a Chinese restaurant's menu. Funny where songs come from. Today in 1976, American saxophonist Rudy Pompelli 
died of lung cancer at the age of 52. Although not a smoker himself, it is believed he contracted the disease through secondhand smoke. With Bill Haley and his Comets, he had the 1955 number one single with Rock Pump. Haley released one solo album, Rudy's Rock, the Sax that Changed the World. And yes, he did. Today in 2012, American record producer and session musician Al DeLore died at the age of 82. In the early 60s, DeLore played keyboards for various Phil Spector productions and the Beach Boys, Glenn Campbell, including John Hartford's General On My Mind, Jimmy Webb's By the Time I Get the Phoenix, Wichita Lineman, and Galveston. He was also a member of the Los Angeles session musicians known as the Wrecking Crew as a band leader. He had his own hit in 1970 with an instrumental version of the song from MASH. The real title is called Suicide is Painless. We've been watching those MASH series. It's mm -hmm. really cool, those old ones. Man. That's good TV right there. Oh, love mm -hmm. it. Love this song. Today in 2013, American musician Paul Tanner died of pneumonia at the age of 95. He was a member of the Glenn Miller Orchestra and later developed and played the Electro Thurman, an electronic musical instrument that mimics the sound of the theremin. He can be heard performing on the opening title theme music of the 1963-66 CBS TV comedy series, My Favorite Martian. His Thurman playing is also featured on several recordings by the Beach Boys, most noticeably this one, Good Vibration. You can hear it in the background. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Born on this day back in 1929, Hal Blaine, American drummer and session musician, he's most, uh, most known for his work with the Wrecking Crew in California. Blaine played on numerous hits by Elvis Presley, John Denver, the Ronettes, Simon and Garfunkel, the Carpenters, the Beach Boys, Nancy Sinatra, and the Fifth Dimension. Woo! Blaine has played on 40 number one hits, over 150 top 10 hits was recorded by his own admission, over 35,000 pieces of music over four decades of work. Blaine died of natural causes on March 11th in 2019 at his home in Palm Desert, California. 90. Wow, what a busy guy. Mm -hmm. Imagine hearing all these hits and go, oh, I played on that, I played on that, I played on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. I had a blast research, researching these history notes for you. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Uh, I'm called the Rock and Roll Realtor because I play with the greatest classic rock band, Bluestone Ivory. You can go to bluestoneivory.com. We'll be at Jim and Jack's on March the 19th. In July, we're going to be at Keener Park in Westchester and Arlington Memorial Garden Cemetery on August the 14th. They're dying to hear us. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> bluestoneivory.com for our full schedule. All right. Phil. Yes. Yes. If it's not broken, don't fix it. I know. I know. So why are we trying we, to fix it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I know. We have been trying to fix the appraisal profession for so long, and it really, I mean, it's it's just mind-blowing. It really is. Let me ask you a question, Gary. I need to I need you to answer this question for me, okay? All right. So here lately, we have been getting a circumstance in the market where there isn't a lot of inventory out there, okay? You have, let's say you put something up, a uh, house up on the market for sale. You get all of these offers in. What if you get an offer that's, how to kind of put this, it's so outlandish that you question even if it's a valid offer or not. You see oh, what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, question is, every one of them. But, but is that happening where people are putting in these massive, massive offers knowing that the appraisal it will not, they probably won't appraise out, mm -hmm. and then they use that appraiser as a negotiation tool? Is that what's going on here? That can happen. Um, it, it, it's interesting that you said uh, I've had, I had 12 offers on one house the first day on the market. Right. And, and right. They, they ranged from asking price to 30000 over asking price. Right. <clears throat> and I use a spreadsheet because, of course, we have to follow the fair housing rules. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we, no love letters from buyers, nothing like that. Right. We don't want to sway the seller to pick me, pick me, pick me over this one because yeah. we love your house. We're going to raise our family in your house. We want to send our kids to. Sure, Saint sure. So, yeah. yeah. Got to avoid all that stuff. Right. So right. I do a spreadsheet and all it is is just basic numbers. How many days for inspection? How many days for appraisal? 
uh, when the earnest money, how much earnest money right. is there going to be? Okay, so they're offering 20000 over asking price. Are they going to pay the difference if it doesn't appraise? Well, that's what I was asking. And then and then if that happens... I've had sellers take the one that was a solid deal yeah. at asking price versus one for 20000 over. Vince, I did my job. But, okay, so if you make an offer, if you say to a seller, I'm going to make an offer 50000 over, and you have no intention whatsoever of paying of, of that, paying that. Yeah, right and then you're, you're relying on the appraisal to come in lower and say well i'm going to now renegotiate is that even is, is that ethical i mean is that an I, ethical practice I don't, th- I don't think it is because, because you're, you're making an offer it's not even real as a realtor my job like i said last segment is to in, educate the seller as to what market value is right, right. so uh, we have one right now that's going to be closing in about two and a half three weeks from now they offered fifteen thousand over asking price. The seller is very prepared to take less than that because I right. don't believe it's going to appraise for that. Right, right. It's an FHA transaction. So whatever the value is on on the appraisal, that's what's going to be locked yeah. in on the FHA. I'm, I'm very certain. I, I, I'm, it'll just, pra- I'm just amazed. It, I'm sure it'll appraise for asking price because yeah. I did my homework. But I'm just amazed. I'm amazed. So, so you look at that emotion and you look at these things that are going on now with multiple offers coming in high, coming in low, and to take me out of the equation the property, uh-huh. inspecting it, all these things, is ridiculous. Yeah. I don't think the regulators at FHFA have even looked into the emotional side that real estate is. I mean, every single one of these transactions is extremely emotional. And if we don't get in there and do our job in a traditional manner, I think you're going to see more and more problems. It's going to create a bigger headache for realtors. I'll tell you that right now. At the end of December, Realtor Magazine had this article. On it. What's it that? Uh, residential appraisers. Data scientists, artists, artists, or quacks. or quacks. You know, and that's and, that, and that's actually funny. That article came out, and believe it or not, my friend Jonathan Miller from New York, who's one uh-huh. of the, the most you know seen appraisers in the world, he got mad at that quacks thing. Okay, <laughs> and it's it actually is a pro appraiser article. Oh, oh yeah, it is. You know, but it's a terrible headline. You know, it's awful. It grabs your attention. It grabs though. your attention, but it makes me look like an idiot. You know, I don't like that. So no, I I tell you right now. It, but you, you really are a data scientist. We are data science. We're, we're analysts. We, we analyze markets every single day. And look, when you've been doing it for 22 years, like and how myself, can you analyze a house honestly and thoroughly without right. stepping foot in the house? Well, bingo. I mean, bingo, or at least having the knowledge and data as to what's going on in the neighborhood. You know, one of the biggest complaints people have is it, it, this new desktop cuts down on the drive time to get for me to get to the house. The drive time is part of the analysis. I have to go through neighborhoods and and, and look at the. I mean, sure, yeah. this, this is what it is. Drive time is part of research, you mm-hmm. see. And that's what they're what, not getting. What, what neighborhood do you have to drive through to get to that neighborhood? It, it is all a matter of, of data analytics. It's a matter of what, me what, being out what did, there in the world. What did the buyer see as they were driving up to the house? What got their emotions oh, I know. flowing? I know. I know. It's, you it's need everything. To feel I have to feel it. I, it's it's everything. It's the full picture. It would and be the fact, this, it'd be the same thing as me just sending the buyer yes. to look at the house, and they call me up and say, we want to buy it. I've tried doing it. I've had, I had a buyer once. Right, and right. A friend, they, they looked at the house. Uh, her friend referred her to me because they didn't have a realtor. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to use the listing agent. She called and says, I want to buy it. I want to buy it tonight. And it's already 6 o'clock on Sunday evening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we we did our research. We wrote the offer. We put it together. We got it through. It closed. I didn't even see the house. Yeah. But it yeah. was very uncomfortable. Well, of course it was uncomfortable. Was not, of course it was uncomfortable. I was not very happy with that whole transaction. Big, I didn't like it. The biggest thing I have to worry about now as a realtor is the number one question is who is doing the, the appraisal. appraisal inspection. Yeah. That's the whole thing. And if you get these big 3D fancy dancy cameras coming in, then you know it probably is not one. And where is your data? Is it going to be sold? Look, I go inside houses all the time, and people say, hey, look, I want you to take a picture of my room, but please don't get the gun safe in the corner. I don't oh, want to have that oh, shot in there. Yeah, 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 yeah but yeah, no, right, no, you right. got no, you got 3D now, Gary. Okay, you got 3D camera going around that room showing your Second Amendment in there. Do you really want that out there in the in the world to be sold off as data? I believe I'm, in I Second care. Amendment. I own a couple weapons. I believe it, too. I have concealed carry. I love my Second Amendment. You know, yeah. And and. But, but you if, have privacy too. If, if I if I see if I'm looking at a house and they have a deer head on the wall, yeah, a buyer wants they scream bloody murder. They they yeah. walked in the room and there was a big deer head on the wall and well, she went freaked out and I says don't worry about well, it. He got stuck. <laughs> he was coming through. He's he's he got stuck there. He's been there for a couple but years. Now, but worry. now you're gonna have it. Now you're gonna have a three D of a, of a ten point buck. And then that'll like you know next thing you know you're getting all these this 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 hate mail or this love mail from taxidermists mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So look, man. It is. It we. It's coming. 
As realtors, you need to know it. Find out who's going inside the house. This is they're they're selling this as the next best thing, but really, I think it's going to be a, a bigger hassle than anything else. If it's not broken, do not fix it. I've got a list of things. Uh, know what kills a house deal. Okay. And top of this page, appraisal problems delay. The appraiser is not local and misunderstands, misunderstands the, the market. market. Yes. Boom. Yes. Boom. 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 And the appraiser didn't even walk inside the house. Of course not. I mean, that's <laughs> that. Look, they tried. And it will not work today. It will not work. So if you're a buyer and you're going through a bank and, you know, if you're selling this property, the bottom line is, is who's going to do the collateral analysis? And remember, $10,000 today in 2022 is a lot more meaningful than $10,000 in 2019 because oh, yeah, of inflation. Yeah. And it's really going to start hitting people's pocketbooks. That is you know? Phil Crawford, and he is a local appraiser. Local appraisal appraiser. Stream. Yep, the appraisal stream. And, and then you, also the you host head of up, the uh, Voice of Appraisal podcast. Where the they, number where one, can I hear that? They can go to the Voice of Appraisal podcast on YouTube okay. or voiceofappraisal.com. In America, yeah. it's it's cutting edge. You know, I am the unofficial spokesperson of the appraisal profession these days because <laughs> no one else is talking about this. So, um, you know, it's good. It's all and you good. Don't, don't even bleep anything out. It's well, real. Well, sometimes we do. Yeah, it's real. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we do, though. We get a little crazy. I listened to the last one. <laughs> it was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, Podcasting is Ke fun. Kevin missed the, the button on that one. <laughs> that one slipped yeah. through. <laughs> We're not boring. We're not boring. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. We're going to have a visit with Bill Kerrigan of the Dragonfly Foundation coming up next. You're listening to the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour on WDJO 1480 AM now on FM 99.5 and 107.9. Yeah. Do you want to sell your home but don't know where to start? Thinking about downsizing but the process is just too much? Gary Rossingnall, real estate pro at REMAX Preferred Group and host of the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour on WDJO, has the answers. Let Gary put his vast real estate knowledge to work for you. Interest rates are at record lows and the real estate market is red hot. Now is a great time to make your move. Call Gary at 513-777-2402. That's 513-2402. Licensed in Ohio and Kentucky. Postmodern Jukebox, a rotating musical collective bringing popular music back in time. I'll be there for you. March 2nd, Taft Theater. Postmodern Jukebox. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com and the Taft Theater box office. Don't miss Postmodern Jukebox Live. Honey, I can't get this done. I'll have to call a plumber. We'll make it Zen's Plumbing. I've never heard anything but the best about them. Why is that? They're a longtime local family-owned firm that I know I can trust. Zen's Plumbing? Okay, I'll call them. Zin's Plumbing, can I help you? Yes, I hope so. My wife gave me strict orders to call only you. Well, we appreciate that. We do try to be the best plumbing firm in town, and we've been at it close to 40 years now. Well, how do you charge? Do I get a shock? See the bill? With Zin's Plumbing, you'll always know how much a job will cost before we start. We bill on a flat rate basis, not an inefficient hourly billing system. How soon can I get service? Usually on the same day. We work within a two-hour time frame. That sounds great. Zen's Plumbing is great. Ask anyone who knows. Call them at 513-681-2501. 681-2501. Take a step back away from the hurried life you live today and relax. Take a stroll through the Covered Bridge Antique Mall. For the past 29 years, Covered Bridge Antique Mall has been the go-to shop for treasure and bargain hunters from the tri-state and beyond. Beautiful antiques, jewelry collectibles, and one-of-a-kind items. Covered Bridge Antique Mall, a truly unique shopping experience. 7508 Hamilton Avenue in the heart of historic Mount Healthy. 5739 or visit their Facebook page. Covered Bridge Antique Mall is open to... ...through Sunday, 10 till 5, closed Monday, following all state-recommended safety guidelines. Do you have taxiety, that uncertain feeling before doing your taxes? Connect with Liberty Tax and then just breathe in and cash out. Get your refund faster with direct deposit to a Deep Blue debit account. Deep Blue. Visit StopTaxiety.com to schedule your appointment and let's end taxiety. Liberty Tax. Faster access to funds based on comparing refunds via direct deposit versus a mailed paper check. Terms and conditions apply. Oh, get off. Let's rock the house. 
Hey, you're listening to the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour with yours truly, Gary Rosignol. I am your senior real estate specialist with Remax Preferred Group. Senior. S R E S. <laughs> you betcha. The Dragonfly Foundation supports pediatric cancer families and patients by building a network that connects Dragonfly families with each other and the community, providing programs that enhance cancer programs and partner with Cincinnati's Children's Hospital. This gentleman is on the board of directors of the Dragonfly Foundation. He is their number one cheerleader and their number one fan for years. This is my friend, Mr. Bill Kerrigan. Good morning, Bill. Hello. Bill's on the way. He's on the way. (laughs) That's all right. Well, we are not at a loss to talk. That's no, for sure. <laughs> no, that's for sure. I'll just real quick to let you know that uh, the Dragonfly Foundation, um, they they need our support. Uh, they are, um, it's a 503 501c3, 501c3 mm-hmm. nonprofit, and they rely on volunteers. Uh, by the way, every dollar that you donate to the Dragonfly Foundation, 87% goes to the families. That's right. That's right. How many how many nonprofits do you know have that kind of? It's it's a phenomenal organization. It really is. Is Bill on there now? Okay. Good morning, Bill. Let's see if we can get Bill here. Hey, Bill. It's the snow, is what it is. It's the weather. It's yeah. just, it's just messing up everything. But it's the, those three D appraisals. It's the three D appraisals. That's probably what it is. <laughs> this is what happens. You see, we're trying to do a desktop here. We're trying to do a desktop interview, and look what has going. And, and the Bengals <laughs> going to to the Super Bowl. Yes. Yes. Only when hell freezes over. And, and it's, it's coming. It's coming. That's right. And what know? happened this week? Oh, my God. <laughs> no. But the dra- the Dragonfly, though, if I'm not mistaken, you can use your, I think it's your your Kroger Plus card. Absolutely. And you can, you can yep. make it so they donate to the Dragonfly. How's that work? You just know? just Google uh, uh, Kroger Community Rewards. Okay. And there you can set up whatever nonprofit that you want. Right. To, um, and cr- every dime, every dollar you spend at Kroger's, they will donate a small portion to the Dragonfly to the Foundation Dragonfly, yes. or whatever. Yeah. Also, you didn't know about Amazon Smiles? Uh-uh. No, tell me oh, about yeah. that one. Okay. Am- instead of going to your Amazon and and ordering whatever you order on right. Amazon, right. just set it up, go to Amazon Smiles. Okay. And then when you log in next time, it'll log into Amazon Smiles and for every dollar you spend, a small portion will go to whatever nonprofit that you... And you just designate Dragonfly yeah. to be that nonprofit. Doesn't cost you another dime. Right, but right. But they have... Amazon has donated millions of dollars every year right. to nonprofits. They've done a great job. Yeah. They've done a great job. Amazon Smiles, Kroger Community Rewards. And what they really, really need right now, and I've got uh, $350 worth of gift cards, which I've collected in sure. the past few weeks. They need gift cards. Okay. okay. $5, $10, $20, $50 gift cards, any restaurant, any apartment store, any gas station. Really? Okay. Because okay. their families come into Cincinnati because their doctor diagnosed their child in some place in Texas right. with some kind of cancer or blood disease, and they say, you need to get to the best hospital in the country. So they come Cincinnati into Cincinnati Children's. Children's is what it is. And then they put up the families then. Yeah. So it is. Do you still do your Christmas uh, Dragonfly we special? Do. You we put, do. You, yeah. you, you take both studios. Yeah. You get them ready to go and stuff like I that. I have musicians over there. And yeah. I, I, we couldn't get the families in here in person, but I right, do have right. some. But we raised uh, about $2,000 with the gift cards for right. the Dragonfly Foundation. That's great. Year. That was That's cool. That's great. Yeah. You know, when it comes to nonprofits, they are the best. They really are. And if you want to help the Dragonfly Foundation right now, ladies and gentlemen, just get your smartphone, your your smart device out, and text the word WINGS15, W-I-N-G-S-1-5, to 71777. And if you just donate $5, do it right now. If you wait till this afternoon, you'll forget. It's W-I-N-G-S-1-5 to 71777. $5 $5 goes a long way with the Dragonfly Foundation. Every $5 donation is fantastic. You need to do that. And um, next Saturday, they've got their Grand Gala, which is uh, it's a black tie optional event at the uh, Music Hall. And it's uh, they're going to have dinner, plated dinner, beautiful music performances, fabulous entertainment by Endless Summer Band, open bar, silent auction, Grand raffle, they will raise that evening. They will raise a hundred thousand dollars. Wow, wow, it's unbelievable. 
that's that's over and above all the sponsorship and, sure and the uh the uh, auction items that they have. That, that, that so they next have. weekend is going to be rocking in Cincinnati. That's for sure. You bet. February twelfth, this, and then February thirteenth. Things Super happen. Bowl. Things happen. <laughs> Things happen. That is Super for Bowl. sure. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Well, we're just about out of time. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and watching. I'd also like to thank my friend, Mr. Phil Crawford. Thank you, Gary. Voice of appraisal for coming down here. We'll have him back in the next uh, few weeks because it's always a pleasure. Thank you, man. I appreciate we it. We never run out of something to talk you, about. We're going to have a good weekend next weekend. You bet. You. Please <laughs> remember, I am a realtor, certified residential specialist, and a senior real estate specialist. I'm here to help you. Just call me, 513-777-2402. You can find me online at rockandsensi.com. Don't forget, hug your kids, call your parents, Kiss your spouse every day. Wash your hands constantly. Safe out there. And next week, my guest is Kay Edwards, the Cincinnati Area Board of Realtors president for 2022. We're going to have a good conversation oh, with yeah. her. A lot of things going on. Stepping into the studio live is Wesley Adams and Max Gunnerman on the Car Tech Show. And this song is dedicated to buyers and sellers. This is Blue Sun Ivory performing the hit song by the Eagles, Let's Not Have One, A Heartache Tonight. <laughs> for another great show and if you have any real estate questions just call me at 513-777-2402 or go to rockandrollrealestateagent.com thanks to all my sponsors who make this show possible as well as chris and miles beersford brokers of remax preferred group a special thanks to wdjo station manager gary stevens and my producer dan gettlefinger i would also like to shout out to all my clients What makes a smart buyer shop at All Geyer? Organization, unlike junkyards where there are piles and piles.